The mere mention of the title Stranger Things sends your brain into a frenzy followed by the extremely captivating theme song. Along with that amazing intro credit sequence came some lovable characters and visuals that played on some hardcore sci-fi nostalgia. That's part of what makes this show so great. The references to classic sci-fi and horror movies are on point. Before you rush off to the Upside Down and hear our list, head on over to the subscribe button and join the notification squad to stay up to date with all the latest videos. But first, it's quiz time. Can you guess what feature film these emoji are showing? Find out at the end of the video. E.T. To anyone who loves this show and has seen Spielberg's film E.T., it's pretty obvious that it was a huge point of reference for Stranger Things. Both are about a lovable yet threatening alien, so to speak, with fantastic powers. They both have a kid hiding the alien in their home. At one point, E.T. also dons a blonde wig and dress just like Eleven's. Eggo waffles become Eleven's staple, while E.T. loved bite-sized Reese's pieces. We also see E.T. and Elle experience the wonder of television for the first time. Both have a working, financially struggling single mother. Oh, and let's not forget the bicycles and the very crucial getaway scene. In E.T., there's the famous scene in which Elliot and his squad are riding away from government agents, and E.T. uses his powers to make them all fly over the police barricade. If you haven't seen the movie, you still know this scene. In Stranger Things, Eleven and the boys are also trying to get away while riding their bicycles. But instead of flying, Eleven uses her mind to flip a van full of government baddies. Well done, Duffer Brothers. <laughs> a Nightmare on Elm Street. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. A Nightmare on Elm Street was the film that made us terribly afraid to fall asleep. The villainous Freddy Krueger proved that no one is safe, not even in your dreams. In the film, he pops into teens' dreams to make their lives terrible because that's what spooky guys do in horror movies. As if being in high school wasn't tough enough, right? In the remake and classic version of the film, there's a scene in which the wall stretches as Freddy comes into the scene. Look familiar? That's because it happens in Stranger Things as well. The Demogorgon makes some funky things happen to the walls too. But that's not all of it. There's also a scene in which Nancy and Jonathan rig Jonathan's house with booby traps and torch the creature. Just like the other Nancy in Elm Street, she traps and lights Freddy on fire. There are two Nancys, do you think that's a coincidence? They're both faced with the stuff of nightmares and these kids can't seem to catch a break. Which of these scary guys would you be the most afraid to go up against? Hola! Did you hear about the latest addition to our family? The richest Espanol is the perfect place for all you native Spanish speakers out there. Don't speak Spanish? No problem, come on over. This is the perfect place to practice. Amazing facts, interesting people, and funny pictures. Check out the richest Espanol today! Creepy Carrie! Creepy Carrie! <laughs> Carrie. The master of horror novels Stephen King has produced some of the best scary and sci-fi stories of our generation. The movies based off of his novels have been equally as frightening and amazing. We're looking at you, it. The classic scary movie Carrie is based on King's novel of the same name. As with all great horror films, there was in fact a remake. But for the purposes of this section, we're only going to refer to the classic. The protagonist, Carrie White, played originally by Sissy Spacek, has telekinetic powers that she's trying to figure out. Sometimes they end up causing a bit of violence. If this sounds familiar, it's because Carrie and Eleven both have similar powers. They're also generally sweet girls that seem harmless. Until they're provoked, that is. Then all heck breaks loose. At this point, they're willing to hurt anyone that stands in their way or threatens them. There's also a great homage to the end of Carrie. If you recall, we see Carrie's grave and then her hand popping out from the dirt. In Stranger Things, we see Nancy's hand burst through the tree portal to the Upside Down, which of course made us jump the same way Carrie did. <laughs> Altered States What's up with the sensory deprivation tanks? Towards the end of the first season of Stranger Things, we see the main characters build a sensory deprivation tank for Eleven. It's meant to help her focus her powers and see if she can find Barb and Will. Seems like a scary thing to do as a kid, but luckily Joyce is there helping Eleven feel safe. Unlike all of the other time she spent in the tanks at the Hawkins lab by herself. Can you imagine how terrifying that must be? Using it as an experience for focus is one thing, but they make Eleven explore the upside down. No thank you, we'll pass. Now for those of you who have also seen the sci-fi show Fringe produced by J.J. Abrams, you're probably already knowledgeable about the concept of sensory deprivation tanks. 
Fun fact for you sci-fi lovers, both of these shows are actually referencing a sci-fi film from the 80s called Altered States. Sensory deprivation tanks play a large part as one of the main characters uses the tank to tap into areas of his mind that no one ever could. Sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? I'm locked inside the Fatelli's basement with this guy. <laughs> Rocky Road? The Goonies. When we first watched Stranger Things, we got some major nostalgic vibes that felt really similar to the film The Goonies. This show feels loaded with Goonies references. Doesn't Dustin remind you of a chunk-like character? Especially in the scene where he finds a stash of chocolate pudding and shouts at Mike about his treasure findings. Mike! I found a chocolate pudding! Looks like that darn lunch lady was hiding them. This is totally similar to The Goonies, where Chunk finds an ice cream stash and calls out to the rest of the group. So many feels, right? In the show, we follow a group of preteens who share a love of comic books and Dungeons and & Dragons. These outsiders also share qualities with the misfits in The Goonies. Like, for example, their innocence. The difference is that The Goonies go on an adventure because of a map they found. In Stranger Things, the kids are on a journey to find their missing friend. Also, can we talk about Barb for a second? She was the doomed character and fan favorite in Stranger Things. Poor Barb, she deserved better. But have you noticed that her face looks very similar to Steph in The Goonies? They could be long-lost sisters. Alien the iconic franchise Alien has some of the most visually intriguing creatures we've seen. So naturally, there have been sequels, remakes, and spin-offs. But we've also seen some inspiration of H.R. Geiger's designs in Stranger Things, especially in the Upside Down. In Alien, there are slimy creatures that use humans as incubators. There are also the terrifying creatures that stick to the victims' faces. They're pretty cool looking, but still, gross. In Stranger Things, we see something reminiscent of these terrifying aliens. Remember those slimy, slug-looking things that cover Barb's face? We still get chills. Remember the greenish, slimy, webbed entry portals into the Upside Down? The pulsing red heart and slimy webbing totally look like the facehugger pods in Alien, don't they? Speaking of those guys, when Will is found, Joyce and Hopper pull something out of Will's throat which apparently filled him with slug spawns. Sound a bit familiar? And how about those hazmat suits? They're used in both Alien and Stranger Things. Everyone knows hazmat suits are impenetrable, right? And when Nancy yells, Go to hell, you son of a It's a direct reference to the scene in Aliens when Ripley shouts something similar at the Alien Queen. Stephen King's Firestarter. In yet another Stephen King adaptation, the film Firestarter is another source of inspiration for Stranger Things. The main character, Charlie McGee, played by Drew Barrymore, has a very similar upbringing to Eleven. In fact, we think they'd have a lot to talk about. Heck, they might even be best friends in an alternate universe. Much like the title suggests, little Charlie sets things ablaze when prompted. Don't let the cuteness fool you. Daddy's little pyro is not someone you want to mess with. Both girls have psychic powers, and are tormented through countless experiments run by scientists trying to weaponize their power. They both also get hooked up to brainwave monitors so that the evil scientists can track their progress. The homage is apparent in one scene where Eleven starts a fire with her mind after she overloads the longwave radio at school to try to get in touch with Will. Totally not a coincidence, which is why we love this show. Eleven and Charlie also both use their powers to take out the baddies once they decide they've had enough. What these girls have gone through is enough to make anyone lose their mind. Close Encounters and Poltergeist If someone were to tell you that a lost loved one is communicating with them, you'd find it a bit surreal, wouldn't you? Now if they told you that they've been talking with them via lights, you'd probably think they've gone a bit screwy. In Stranger Things, Joyce, played by Winona Ryder, is sure that her missing child Will is the one who is making lamps light up in her home. She eventually goes ham and covers the place in Christmas lights and even creates an alphabet wall. A really brilliant idea, actually. But naturally, she's dismissed as being distressed about her son but eventually Hopper and others come to believe her. In the famous sci-fi film Close Encounters of the Third Kind, there's also a parent who becomes obsessed. A father becomes obsessed with aliens after an encounter with them. This film also uses light communication, when scientists use lights to communicate with the aliens towards the end of the film. The show also references Poltergeist by communicating through walls just like the family in the film does. There's also a direct reference to the film when we find out Joyce buys tickets to watch the movie with her son. X-Men Stranger Things gave us a lovable bunch of kids whose only worry starts off as being able to stay up on a school night to play Dungeons & Dragons. A totally important and valid concern, by the way. We also find out that these kids love comic books. 
physical copies of comic books were even more valued than they are now, especially in an era when kids didn't have access to the world right in the palm of their hands. Comic books are known for their awesome and fantastic storylines, much like Stranger Things is. So naturally, it makes sense that comic books are not only mentioned, but also referenced directly. In perhaps one of the coolest Easter eggs in the show, Dustin and Will reference a very appropriate X-Men storyline. The first episode of the show, Dustin challenges Will to a bike race. Race back to my place? Winner gets a comic. Any comic? Yeah. The doomed Will ends up being the winner and he shouts out that he wants X-Men issue 134. The plot of the issue actually foreshadows the arrival and struggle of Eleven and her powers. The comic book finds Jean Grey mentally snapping and becoming Dark Phoenix, a cosmic entity with dangerous psychic powers far beyond her control. Twin Peaks Stranger Things had us on a roller coaster right from start to finish, especially when it came to finding Will. At the end, we see Will back home safe and sound. Or is he? Well, he goes to the bathroom and barfs up a slug. Pretty gross, right? But the moment that sent shivers up and down our spines was when he stares at himself in the mirror and the whole room begins to flicker and momentarily becomes the upside down. We don't know about you guys, but this moment just about sent us into absolute panic mode. Can't Will just be safe? Poor kid. We totally admire this kid's resolve as he calmly returns to his family. Can you blame him for at least pretending everything is okay for a moment? If this seems eerily familiar, chances are you've seen David Lynch's cult classic TV series Twin Peaks. Will's bathroom moment recalls the last moment of the series in which Agent Cooper has a similar moment in the bathroom. Dale Cooper stares at himself in the mirror before smashing his head into it. As he lifts his head, we see his reflection is that of Bob's. Both Agent Cooper and Will were unable to escape their journey unscathed. Well, there you have it, folks. Those were some of the references that are hidden among the awesome scenes of Stranger Things. Which were your favorite? Are there any we may have missed? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out more in our awesome playlist. Before we go, here's the answer to the emoji quiz. Did you get it right? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.